Kenny Smith's appearance with us today, brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Mr. Smith, tell us what you're doing uh, with Enterprise these days. Well, it's called the ultimate pickup moment. And no, it's not dating. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, uh, you know, we took the 16 uh, great moments of college basketball. We put them in brackets, and people voted on to see which one's the best. All the way down, and you kept going, who's going to win, who's going to win. And today we have the winner. Uh, My ultimate moment was when Lorenzo Charles dunked against North Carolina mm. State. Uh, but what won was um, school from Durham, Christian Leitner against Kentucky. That won. So you go to Facebook slash uh, Enterprise rent a car, and you'll see how it broke down and got to that point. You know, I can't argue with either one of those. I would lean your way um, as well because it's, it's, I think it's pretty hard to top, uh, top that game. Were you, there, were like, there was almost no one who thought – NC State could win that game. Did you going into that thing? You know what? I wasn't a college basketball fan until that moment. I, I followed, and I was, you know, I was going into college. The following year, I was I chose in North Carolina, but I was a Nick fan. I really, and <laughs> that moment made me go, "Wow, this is what I'm getting into." And you know, I mean, the, the, the late in the moment was great, and you can't take anything away. But this was the national championship game winning shot, like there's <laughs> nothing bigger than that. The national championship game winning shot. Um, which to me was incredible. You know, and you know, I got to know Sid Lowe a little bit because he came obviously to Minnesota as a player, and then later came back as a coach. And it is interesting, and he talked; he's talked about it forever. That still, you know, and he's learned to live with it. That to this day, people run into him at airports. That's still what they, you know, they want to talk about it. Those are the kind of Without moments question. you're talking about that it that that for your average rube, it never it never goes away. Never goes away, man. And you know, I, I think that you know. Just the magnitude of the moment and where it was, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I remember a lot about that moment, and uh, you know, and I wasn't, I was nowhere part of it other than watching it on television and screaming in, the, in my head off. Well, I was in the gym as a newspaper man, and I do remember looking at the uh, looks of disbelief on the faces of many members of the uh, losing team there, and I, that'll stay with me, for, and I'm sure with oh, them. Oh yeah, pounding the floor. Oh, yes. Oh man, all of those moments. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that stays with. Yeah, that stays with. It me. absolutely does. Let's talk a little bit, Kenny, about uh, this tournament. Interesting stat I saw that over the course of Wisconsin's run. They've, I believe, outscored their opponents in the second half a combined 160 to 103. So they've been pretty dominant. Is there any? I'm not hearing very many people who think they have a chance to be that dominant in the second half against Kentucky. What do you make of this matchup? Well, I think the one thing about you know Kentucky is you know throughout the year they've been inconsistent and they played like 17 and 18 year olds at times, mm. and like they were at an AAU game mm-hmm. and then. These four games, they play like they're 22 and 23, uh, which we had not seen that consistent. If they play like this, probably would have been the number one seed. Um, so surprised, uh, Wisconsin's been steady, man. They they've been steadfast. They've been they've been very consistent on what they've done. So I'm interested to see this game. And uh, again, it's youth versus experience. The same storyline that's been going on for the last four games for Kentucky. You know, I kind of like a lot of people. Obviously, want to concentrate on the Calipari approach, with maybe the, getting the best talent he possibly can, knowing that they may leave very quickly. Wisconsin goes at it a different way. You could say, you could argue that this time around, Donovan has gone about it a different kind of way. That is one of the things I like about college basketball: is as much emphasis as there is on the Kentucky approach, there are still, I think, different ways to at least be relevant and at least give yourself a chance to win the thing. Do you agree? Yeah, it is. I agree. I, I just can't believe that there were, you know, you, you, I don't know if you could have a steady diet because remember last year they weren't in a tournament. So True. <laughs> that steady diet, you know, and they thought, and a bunch of those guys went pro as well. So doesn't mean that it's going to work that way either. Um, and um, But it's fun to watch because there's so many multiple ways to, to kind of uh, be successful. Um, you know, the traditional way is going to work the most. Uh, I feel, uh, but, you know, it can work a lot of different ways. What's the most, to this point in the tournament, the single most shocking development or result for you? I think the school from Durham losing to Mercer. Mm. That was, um, it was shocking in this sense. After the first four minutes of the game, I looked at Charles and said, they're going to lose. They're not as good as them. And he was (laughs) like, you're right. 
they're not. <laughs> and he's like, they're not as good. He said, wow, I didn't realize they weren't as good as them. And, 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 and you know, the game comes down. and it was, So that was a, probably the biggest moment where I was like, wow, here's a school that we probably seen play three or four times. Only reason we knew a little bit more about the school, Langston Hall, you know, he, he played on my AAU team in Atlanta. Right. And he was coached by one of our, uh, our chief security guy that works at Turner. So we knew him and we knew a little bit about the school, but we didn't know they had a, a balance like that uh, at all. Let me. You mentioned Charles. Um, I want to talk to you a little about your your on air relationship with him and and the job that you guys do together because I think one of for me historically uh, one of the most underrated aspects of the whole bit that you guys have going is your ability to basically refuse to let Charles get you going when it seems like he wants to you know he wants to kind of throw that Molotov cocktail in to do that. And you, you rarely rise to the occasion. To me, that's part of the genius of the show. How do you pull that off? Is that easy? Is, is it as easy as it appears? Well, it's funny because I grew up with a lot of Charles Barkley, so to speak. <laughs> I grew up in an area that a lot of guys had the same personality. So people are like, oh, it's so different. I'm like, no, it's just like I'm home again like <laughs> when I'm 15 because a lot of guys had the same personality and I grew up in New York that Charles has. So – it's a lot of fun, man. And, and, and the one thing, it's a very authentic. We don't rehearse. We, we just basically, we know the topic. But there's no script. Um, when he's mad at me, he's mad at me. When he's happy with me, he's happy and vice versa. There's, it's, it's just basically, you know, I feel like a lot of times that I'm in, like, the, a living room. And there's just happened to be a camera there. And sometimes I forget it's there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, we're on TV, you know, because our conversations are pretty consistent in the green room, in the hotel, on the phone, than they are on, on the show. That's the be- you, you nailed it. That's the best TV and the best radio where it just seems like, oh, there just happens to be a mic there. You don't even notice. You're just having a conversation. It comes off exactly that authentic, which I think clearly is part of why it works. Um, let's stay with a little bit of NBA stuff because there's about five NBA fans left in this town. I'm one of them. <laughs> And um, I'm curious to know. I know this had probably ain't on your front burner uh, because the Wolves haven't been wait, relevant. Congratulations! For... Wait, before you go to NBA, yeah. congratulations to Minnesota and IT champs. What do we make Come of on, this? Man. Is it is it is Come it on, is it okay to celebrate? Is it legal yes. to celebrate an NIT championship? I'm not Without sure. Question: Why? Because if you look at the history of the NIT and you look at the teams, Stanford won it last year. Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. Like the year, like you look at the teams that do well and watch them the next year they make noise in the tournament so yes celebrate that because you know one year championship for first year coach patino that's great and you have to celebrate that because that means you're on the move and on the rise and then that helps when a recruit turns on the television and he sees you playing still he doesn't he's kind of recognizing that it's not the tournament but he's watching you play that helps it almost, I don't know if you were watching last night, but at the end of the game, it, al- it almost looked like Rick Patino might have been doing as much coaching as Richard. I mean, he was right was that, in it. Man. That was a pretty interesting dynamic, I thought. Man, that was great, man. I mean, that's what your, your dad is supposed to do that. He's, a, he's supposed to do that. Yeah. He's not supposed to be sitting there be like, oh, I'm, a, I'm Rick Patino and I can't really cheer. And I can- No, get back on D. Help, help, look at him. Help, hey, Richie, what are you doing? Take him out the game. That's what he's supposed to do. I love that, man. Yeah, that I, was real. Well, That's authentic. That other stuff is when you contrive and you're thinking about, okay, should I'm on television. Should I be okay? No, man, you're not your son, man. Yeah, of course. I love that. Let me also ask you. Do you know you know Kamani Young pretty well, correct? A, a, one yeah, of, yeah. One of uh, that, one of Richard's assistants. Tell me about him. Yeah, well, he played for my AU basketball team, and he's kind of like my my brother. He's he's my brother's basically surrogate son in a sense. Where um, you know he he played for our teams, uh, grew up. He's been in every meal in our house. He's eaten. Yeah. He stole my trophies when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, he, he, so I know him for a long time. So it's great to see him part of that staff, and that's why I, I followed, and that's why I'm saying celebrate those guys, man, because they, they got something going up there. Um, the Wolves haven't had a lot to celebrate, as you no, well know. So okay, is, now, okay, now is there the well, now maybe, drum, drum, drum? Well, no, maybe, maybe you can, you know, you can either push us off the edge of the cliff, or you can talk us off the ledge. Is there any? 
light. Is there any reason to think, yeah, I mean, they, they did, they're basically going to be a 500 team this year, which by their standards is improvement, but can, is, are the things in place, the, the machinery in place to take the next step here? What do you see? What has to happen here? You got to make the right moves. You know, you just have to make the, you, you, there's, um, there's a, they're, they're on that line where if you make the wrong move, you go back to, a, to the abyss. You make the right move, you become a contender. And that has to be from this thought process has to start now, like this second. You know, this is a 24-hour thought process. And I would the homework that they have to do on the players that they possibly have to re-sign, the players after they're trying to go get in free agency, that, that has to be a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job for the, until September. And if you, they make the wrong move now, that franchise can be nowhere. They make the right move. We'll be talking about a man. Look out, OKC. Look out, Spurs, because here they come. Final question for Kenny Smith. Is it in the national speculation and really conclusion already is that it's inevitable they're going to have to trade Kevin Love? What do you say? Is that the right move? Because the research that if, you, if you're trading Kevin Love, you bet your research better be 100% damn sure that you're getting back something that can get you to be a contender, not not a 11 seed. <laughs> you know, you better be getting something to be a contender. Kenny Smith brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for giving us a minute or two. All right, thank you.